Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. I'm with the University of Ottawa Laboratory for Paleoclimatology. In uh, recent videos, I've talked about the effects of this uh, massive heat wave that has been hitting many regions of the uh, planet uh, this summer. Um, so I discussed regions to soon be uninhabitable from unrelenting heat and humidity. For example, the northeast China Plains, the uh, Middle East, which is shown here, Southern Asia, etc. In this video, I want to talk more about the implications of high heat and humidity for stressing the human body. You know, how much can the human body endure? You've probably heard about this wet bulb temperature of 35 degrees Celsius and 100% humidity. And under those conditions, the human body is not able to sweat. So it's not able to dissipate heat. So you get overheating, heat exhaustion, um, heat stroke within six hours. A perfectly healthy person sitting out in the shade in gale force winds um, under those conditions won't survive uh, outside for six hours, just in a resting state. Um, of course, that time would be shortened if they were working outside. So I'm going to talk about you know, where this number comes from, you know, what a little bit about the physiology of the human body uh, to determine this number. What, what's the physics, what's, what's physically happening to have these limits? And, you know, a lot of people think that as it gets warmer, we can just adapt to it. Well, we can't, we have a certain core body temperature and that limits the heat and humidity that we can withstand. And of course, you know, what about the animals? Different animals have different core body temperatures and are affected differently by heat waves. So I'm going to talk about all of these different effects. Uh, please check out my website, paulbeckwith.net. Um, and uh, please consider uh, donating um, to, uh, you know, I spend a lot of time producing these videos to try to get information out to the public, critical information on abrupt climate change. So please consider chipping in some uh, coffee money or, uh, you know, alcohol money, whatever, <laughs> just to, uh, you know, help me keep these videos going. Um, this is the only funding I get is from donations uh, for these videos. Okay, so I have to talk a little bit about wet bulb temperature and make sure everybody's up to speed on wet bulb. So first of all, you know, how, how do we measure it? Well, if we have a thermometer, just a normal thermometer, um, no moisture involved, we're measuring the dry bulb or normal temperature. So if we take a wet sock, a wet rag, cotton wool, wet it and attach it to the thermometer, and then we wave the thermometer around. There's actually something called a sling hydrometer, which is basically you have a sling, you have this sort of setup. You have two thermometers. You have one normal and one, and you, you wet the material on the end, and then you sling this thing around. Now, the, dry, the, the normal one will measure the air temperature. This one here, when you sling it around, the water will start evaporating, and that will take heat away from the thermometer, so that will depress the temperature. Um, and it'll do that as long as the humidity is not 100%. When the humidity is 100%, both thermometers will measure equal temperatures because there'll be no water evaporation from this. The air can't hold any more moisture. Okay, so the wet bulb temperature is, uh, you know, a very crucial measurement here. So here's an example. You have two thermometers next to each other. This one has a material like a cloth or something that you wet it, you sling it around, and this depresses the temperature. That's the wet bulb temperature. So here's an example of this um, where you have two thermometers and you dip one, a wick in water on one. As you sling it around, the evaporation cools this one, depresses the temperature. And from that temperature difference, you can figure out how much moisture is in the air. So just go to Google Images, doing measuring wet bulb temperature and have a look. It's very important to understand this in terms of to understand how extreme temperatures and humidity affect the human body. OK, 
Okay, we're all going to need to know this as we move forward to much warmer temperatures on our planet. Okay, if you just Google wet bulb temperature charts to figure out, you know, what is the wet bulb temperature, you get all kinds of these curves like this, these complicated looking curves. And I'll just explain a little bit about them since they appear so often. Okay, so here's a, this is called the psychrometric chart. Okay, so I'm just going to try to explain it briefly, but don't worry about it if you don't quite understand what's going on. But th this is a normal temperature across the bottom, the dry bulb temperature. This is the amount of humidity, specific humidity. This is the grams of moisture, grams of water in a kilogram of dry air. Okay, so 15 grams of water in a kilogram of dry air, for example. Um, and what happens is, is these lines coming up here are the wet bulb temperatures, so 20, 15, and so on. Now, when the wet bulb equals the dry bulb, you have 100% humidity. So a dry temperature of 10, a wet temperature of 10, where they intersect, you can draw this curve. This is a 100% humidity curve. You could draw a curve for 80%, 60%, 40%, etc. So if you know the dry bulb temperature and you know the wet bulb temperature, then where the curves, where the lines intersect, that will be the um, that will be the humidity. So if you're 100%, you're on this line and so on. So you can determine the relative humidity from this type of chart. This is at one atmosphere of pressure. That's what those charts are basically showing. Um, you know, how do you read it? Um, here's some more information. So this is just the dry bulb temperature here, the normal temperature. These are lines of constant. Um, this is the wet bulb temperatures here, here on these lines. So this will be a 20 degree wet bulb temperature here. And where the wet and dry, you take a wet and dry reading, and then you can get the curve which gives you the humidity. Okay, and like I say, this is a bit technical. This is another, this is a good site for explaining um, what we have here. So this is the relative humidity here. This is the, uh, you can get the dew point, the wet bulb temperature, dry bulb, etc. Okay, so this is a rather complicated looking chart, but it's very important in terms of figuring out evaporative cooling, air conditioning cooling, the zones over which humans are comfortable inside etc. So, th so those things and you know the different values throughout the year in a particular location and of course that is changing with climate change more hotter and hotter temperatures more evaporation more water vapor in the atmosphere. Okay this is very important I'm stressing this because this is a real public safety thing so these are if the wet bulb temperatures these are in Fahrenheit okay you have these different ratings here. This, this is extreme temperatures above 90. Okay, wet bulb temperatures. Um, if, it's, if it's above 35, 35 Celsius is 95 Fahrenheit. So above 90, if you're doing light, moderate, or heavy work, it tells you, you know, you can work for 10 minutes, rest for 50 minutes. This is how much you have to drink a quart an hour, etc. So these are for people that are working in... Um, hot and humid conditions. This is another chart. So um, basically, if you're at 100% humidity and you're at 35 Celsius, you're right here. So this is the position here in this box where basically you're dead in six hours if you're sitting outside in the shade. So you can figure out you know, if you back off the humidity, the temperature to do that will be higher and higher following this chart. So we could actually follow the line up here for what the human body can handle, but I prefer the next chart here. And this is a NOAA. Okay, so this is the, if you just Google heat index, this is a Wikipedia entry. Okay, so there's a NOAA table here, which is very crucial to figure, to understand. So if we're at 100% humidity, okay, right here, okay, if you follow the line up here, if it's 32 degrees Celsius, which is 90 degrees Fahrenheit and 100% humidity, 
you're in the danger zone. Okay, you're in the danger zone at 32, 33, 34, and at 35, you're dead in six hours if you're outside um, with 100% humidity. So that's these areas. So now, if the temperature is higher, say you were at 70, say the humidity is only 70%, okay? In order to be in the danger zone here, you'd have to be at 36 Celsius or 96 degrees Fahrenheit. And then you would go further a, a bit over out here. And this is where you could only work for six hours uh, or be outside for six hours in the shade under these conditions because the humidity is lower, you'd last longer. Okay, so that's how you determine the chart. So at 40% humidity, you're okay until the temperature, you know, 42 degrees Celsius and so on, 108 Fahrenheit. So if you're in the desert, it's very, very dry and you can withstand much, much higher temperatures um, because the, the humidity is much, much lower. So this is, a, it's very crucial to understand this chart to figure out how to deal with these heat waves and to, to determine how these heat waves that we're seeing around the planet right now, combined with high humidity, how they affect people physiologically. Okay, so let's look at, uh, let's go into more detail on the heat stress. What is it about the human body? Okay, um, there's a paper. Okay, so the, the best paper I found is called An Adaptability Limit to Climate Change Due to Heat Stress. Sherwood, 2020, it was published. Okay, some people argue that humans will simply adapt. We tolerate a wide range of climates today will simply adapt to warmer and warmer temperatures. This argument is false, and it's all outlined in this paper, and I'm going to talk about some of the details of this. Okay, the human body is at 37 Celsius. That's the core body temperature. That's 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. The skin is slightly cooler, okay? The skin is around, it's regulated around 35 Celsius. It's about 2 degrees Celsius cooler um, than it, it's or, or it, it, in Fahrenheit is 95 Fahrenheit instead of 98.6 which is the core temperature this is crucial the human the core has to be in order for heat to be lost dissipated through the skin heat always goes from hot areas to cold areas so if the core is hotter, which it is, the skin is colder, the heat can be dissipated out through the skin, okay? In order for the human body to cool, it has to be warmer than the environment that it's in. It has to be warmer than the wet bulb temperature um, because it's by evaporative cooling. You sweat, the liquid goes on your skin, it evaporates, it takes heat away from the body. So this is a paper that estimated the survivability limit for peak six hour wet bulb temperature, close to 35. Anything beyond that, you get hyperthermia, okay? The, the body temperature is regulated in a tight range. If you go too cold, it's hypothermia. If you go too hot, it's hyperthermia, okay? And then there's some data, some graphs, et cetera, and so on. So basically the conclusion is, you know, global warming of seven degrees Celsius would create zones where that, that are uninhabitable, okay, where the wet bulb is above this. A warming of 11 to 12 would expand these zones. Most of today's human population would be subject to conditions where the wet bulb temperature is greater than 35 uh, Celsius, and therefore, you know, you couldn't work outside, let alone be outside for any period of time without wearing a space suit. You know, people say, well, adapt. Well, we can't change our body core temperature. If we could increase our body core temperature, we could uh, withstand uh, hotter temperatures outside as, some ma as mammals do and birds, for example. Okay, because this is so important, uh, I'm gonna go into the details of this paper here. Okay, and I'll have a second video to do this. So, so basically, there, there's limits to what the human body can withstand, okay? At 100% humidity, that temperature is 35 degrees Celsius. If the humidity was 80%, the temperature would be higher. Um, if the humidity is 60%, the temperature is higher. And uh, I'm gonna talk about, compare humans to mammal, other mammals, thank you.